Okay guys, um, a lot of you guys have been wanting to do this problem. Uh, so I guess this problem says essentially what is or how do you get these two different products, these two different uh, diols from this same alkene. So um, of course this is a dihydroxylation product or uh, problem. Dihydroxylation. Okay, and you're using this alkene. So remember, reactions of alkene. Remember, this is a, a, a Z alkene. Why? Because Z is on the same side, right? So to be a, a syn hydroxylation, so you can have a, a syn or an anti hydroxylation, remember, right? So to be a syn hydroxylation, you're going to want the um, OHs to be put on on the same side, and to be anti, you're going to um, have them put on opposite side. So in order to figure out whether this uh, went syn or anti, you need to actually have um, these products in the same kind of conformation as the starting material to be really obvious. So the way I would do it is to take one of the products and just kind of conformationally change it. So you want to twist, we'll say, leave this side the same and twist this side to where we get the methyl in the same spot or the hydrogen in the same spot as um, on the other side. Uh, and um, if, well we can hopefully already see, let's just twist this one down around like that. So if we do that, all right, so what do we get? We get the, this side, remember, stays the same. <clears throat> okay, but this side twisted, right? So when we did that, we were trying to get these um, methyl groups and hydrogens, or we could think of it as the hydroxyls in the same spot. So, if the, so the hydroxyls are in the same spot, so if the methyl and the hydrogen are also in the same spot, then we know this is the syn hydroxylation product. But if you see, if we turn that, of course, the methyl is still in back there, and the hydrogen is now in front. So if you see, that's opposite of the other side, so this must have been the anti. Okay? So we can do that same analysis just to make sure so let's hold this side the same and put the hydroxyl groups in the same spot and see what we get with our um, hydrogens and our methyl groups. So hold this spot, we'll twist this one like this. And if it's hard for you to do, build these um, in, uh, with your model kit and it'll be um, much more obvious, of course. So uh, we're going to leave this one in the same conformation, this side in the same conformation. But this side twisted, this way, right? So we're going to twist the hydroxyl group from the bottom all the way up to the top. And when we do that, the hydrogen twists to um, the front, actually, here. hydroxyl group is there, and of course that must mean that the methyl group is there. And you can see this is the syn um, dial. So we've got the anti-dial here, and the syn dial here. So now all you got to do is remember how do you get um, the anti-dial from an alkene, and how do you get a syn uh, or anti-dihydroxylation, and how do you get the syn dihydroxylation from the alkenes? Well, uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it. So that's cool. So if you forget one of the ways, then you can um, remember another one. Of course, um, to get the syn dial, it's probably more obvious. The um, easiest way is to use osmium tetroxide and um, sodium uh, bisulfite. Okay, and that'll go directly to the syndial. 
remember the sodium, so you make the os, osmate uh, intermediate and the sodium bisulfite uh, reduces the osmate intermediate. Or you could use another uh, set of conditions, um, more finicky because you've got to keep them at a cold temperature, but um, potassium permanganate um, in a basic solution, NaOH, um, at a very cold temperature. And that won't uh, allow the oxi oxidation to go all the way um, to the, in this case, the aldehydes, the two aldehydes. It'll stop it at the di uh, the syndiol stage. So you can do either one of those. And um, if you're wondering what's the mechanism, you can go back to the other videos and look at that. Um, so it's either this one or this one. It's not both. Okay, so if you put both, of course, it's not going to be right. Um, so anti-dial, how do you do that? Well, there's the real fast, easy way is to um, first MCPVA it. And that's going to give you, of course, the um, uh, epoxide, uh, the three-membered cyclic ether. And then when you get that, of course, you can do uh, two different reactions to open it. So one of those reactions would be uh, the strong basic condition, so NaOH and uh, water. Okay, and that's going to um, give you the, of course, the SN2 attack from the backside of the epoxide, opening it from the other way, and um, uh, giving you the anti-dial. And there's another way, of course, um, and I can see some of you guys are already telling me. Um, it's the, um, so... This might not be the most obvious way, but uh, you can, it's something actually you learned from last semester, so it's Br2, H2O. Okay, and remember, what does that make? Um, yeah, that's right, the halo hydrin. Okay, so yeah, the halo hydrin is what it's called. Uh, that thing, right? Yeah, the halo hydrin. And so um, that makes the halo hydrin. And then what do you got to do? So you're still trying to make the epoxide, so it's essentially what you're doing is two steps to make the epoxide. For those of you who couldn't remember, MCBBA is what this is. And then, of course, then you're going to use a non-nucleophilic base like NaH, sodium hydride. That'll deprotonate the halohydrin oxygen and then uh, allow it to do backside attack on the um, halogen, in this case the bromine. And then uh, you can use the same step up here, NaOH, H2O, to open up that epoxide. Um, actually, there's another way that you can open this epoxide. So there's another way to do this third step. And this is for both of these. In this case, it would be the second step. So. It's either NaOH, so basic conditions, or um, acidic conditions, H3O plus um, water. That will also, um, so this is like sulfuric acid or whatever, and that's the same thing here, or um, H3O plus, so sulfuric acid and water. Um, that will protonate the epoxide of oxygen, of course, and then um, allow water to be the nucleophile and attack. So um, if you're wondering about any of these mechanisms, uh, there's videos of all of them. So go back and look at those videos and uh, you should be cool. Okay, thanks a lot. Questions? Okay, cool.